I buried lentils in my garden. Five days later, the soil did something unreal. What if I told you that a handful of humble lentils could transform your soil in just five days? No fertilizers, no chemicals, just pure biology at work. Stick around, because this experiment might change how you think about feeding your garden forever. I buried a few handfuls of lentils beneath my garden beds, not expecting much more than a fun experiment. But within five days, the results completely blew my mind. The soil became darker, softer, and more alive, like it had just been rejuvenated by nature herself. And the science behind it? It's all about the secret relationship between legumes like lentils and nitrogen-fixing bacteria that literally pump nutrients straight into your soil. Lentils belong to the legume family, plants that form a natural partnership with microscopic bacteria called rhizobium. These bacteria colonize the roots of lentils, forming tiny nodules where they perform a miracle of nature. They take nitrogen from the air and convert it into plant-ready nutrients right in the soil. It's like installing an organic fertilizer factory under your garden bed. This is the essence of regenerative gardening, restoring fertility using life, not chemicals. And lentils, among all legumes, are some of the easiest, fastest and cheapest to use for this purpose. Most gardeners know about beans and peas fixing nitrogen, but lentils are special. Their smaller seeds sprout faster and develop root nodules more quickly. Within 48 to 72 hours of planting, lentil roots start establishing bacterial colonies. By day 5, your soil is already undergoing microscopic transformations. These early bacterial activities release nitrogen and organic acids, making your soil not just richer but biologically active, alive with beneficial organisms. Nitrogen is the backbone of green growth. It fuels leaf development, chlorophyll formation, and healthy cell structure. Without it, plants look pale and sluggish. Lentils give your garden a quick and natural shot of nitrogen without burning roots or upsetting soil balance like synthetic fertilizers often do. Before you rush outside to bury a bag of lentils, here's exactly how to do it the right way. You only need four simple ingredients. Dried lentils, compost or rich garden soil, a layer of organic mulch, and clean water. Make sure your lentils are dry, uncooked and unseasoned, straight from the bag. Cooked or salted lentils won't sprout and therefore won't activate any soil biology. The key is ratio and scale. For a small bed of one square meter, or roughly 10 square feet, use half a cup, about 100 grams, of lentils. For a medium-sized garden bed around five square meters, or 50 square feet, use two and a half cups, which equals about 500 grams. If you're working on a larger 10 square meter plot, 5 cups or 1 full kilogram of lentils is perfect. Always aim for even coverage because uneven distribution leads to patchy microbial growth. Now for the depth. You don't want your lentils sitting on top where they'll dry out or too deep where they suffocate. 2 to 3 inches, or about 5 to 7.5 centimeters, below the surface is the sweet spot. Water plays an equally crucial role. For every one square meter of soil, use one and a half liters of clean water daily to keep the area damp, not drenched. Lentils rot if they sit in soggy soil, so think moist sponge, not mud puddle. All right, let's walk through how to turn lentils into living fertilizer, step by step. First, you'll want to start by preparing your soil. Loosen it up with a fork or a hand trowel so oxygen can flow freely. Make sure to remove any weeds or compacted debris because lentil roots and bacteria really need air to thrive. If your soil feels dry or sandy, go ahead and mix in about an inch of compost to help it hold on to moisture. Next up, measure your lentils based on the size of your garden bed. Evenly scatter them across the prepared soil. Don't just dump them in one spot, but spread them out, kind of like you're seasoning a dish. Once they're scattered, gently rake or mix them into the top two or three inches of soil. 
Now, cover that area with a thin layer of mulch or some leaf litter. This step helps keep moisture in and creates a stable microclimate for the bacteria to thrive. Then, water your bed lightly. The first watering should be generous enough to moisten the top layer, about 2 liters per square meter. After that, just keep up a daily rhythm with about 1.5 liters. Now here's where the magic begins. By day one or two, those lentils will start absorbing water and swelling up. By day three, you'll see tiny roots showing up, and that's when the rhizobium bacteria begin their work. Around day four or five, those microscopic nodules will start forming, fixing nitrogen right into your soil. Even before you spot any sprouts breaking through the surface, your soil is already charging up with nutrients. When the shoots reach 3 to 4 inches tall, cut them down and lightly dig them into the soil. This turns those young plants into green manure. The decomposing roots and stems will release nitrogen back into the soil, giving it a real boost for your next planting. Just wait 5 to 7 more days and your soil will be all set for vegetables, herbs, or flowers that love nitrogen-rich environments. Five days after burying my lentils, the difference was obvious. The soil had changed color from dull and dusty to rich, almost black. It felt springy and alive under my fingers, holding moisture better than before. The smell was earthy, a sign of active microbes and healthy decomposition. When I compared plants growing in the lentil-treated bed versus a control bed, the difference was stunning. The lentil bed plants sprouted faster, their leaves were deeper green, and their stems were thicker. It was clear that nitrogen fixation had kicked in. And the best part? I didn't use a single gram of synthetic fertilizer. A few simple errors can ruin the process. The biggest one is overwatering. Lentils need moisture, not saturation. Too much water suffocates the roots and kills the bacteria. The second mistake is using cooked lentils. Cooked or processed seeds have no life left in them, and you'll just end up feeding fungi instead of enriching your soil. Burying them too shallow exposes them to sunlight and drying. Too deep, and they'll never germinate. Stick to that 2-3 to three inch rule. Also, never skip compost. It acts as a bridge for microbial life, providing the organic matter that keeps rhizobium bacteria active. This isn't just a quick garden trick. What happens when you bury lentils is a miniature example of how nature rebuilds itself. Regenerative gardening is all about feeding the soil first so the soil can feed the plants. Instead of dumping chemical fertilizers that give a short burst of nutrients, you're activating an ecosystem that continuously regenerates fertility. By using lentils, or any legume as a natural nitrogen booster, you're restoring your soil's biology, improving structure, and even enhancing carbon storage. You're turning your garden into a self-sustaining system, one that doesn't just grow plants, but grows life beneath the surface. What started as a small backyard experiment turned into one of the most impressive demonstrations of soil transformation I've ever seen. In just five days, lentils proved that you don't need expensive fertilizers to achieve rich, fertile ground, just the right biology and a bit of patience. If you found this fascinating, don't stop here. Try it in your own garden and share your results in the comments. Let's keep growing knowledge and healthier soil together. And if you want more powerful science-backed gardening experiments like this one, make sure you hit subscribe and share this video with your fellow gardeners.